I think the networking doesn't start in the day of the event. For me, it starts with a preparation. It's like a relationship. So if you want to build a network, you need to invest time on it. You need to understand the different stakeholders, the people that you are talking to, to understand what is their core um, missions, visions, projects, so that you can understand, okay, what should I talk to this person about? Is there something that I can support this person? So always trying to find links. Peak, the innovation talk by Equipa. Peak is an in-depth I2I exchange between equals with which we want to deliver knowledge and impulses for you to benefit from. Our founder Justin talks to guests about innovation, digital transformation and the potential of the digital generation. In today's episode, I am talking to Pedro Ferreira. Pedro is one of the key players in Frankfurt's innovation ecosystem and he is an expert in how to build a sustainable and resilient innovation community. He provides us with insights about how to found your own startup, how to build up resilient and sustainable relationships to other stakeholders, and he also shares some insights about the growth potentials of innovation communities. Enjoy this episode, and we hope that you can take away some key insights about how to build an innovation community. Pedro, it's great to have you here. Welcome to our Innovation Talk Peak. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for inviting me and I'm looking forward to our discussion. Me too. Let's start with our peaky questions. First one, how would you describe innovation in three words? In three words. Well, for me, one really important word is change. Um, I also believe that another word, um, it's creativity. And yeah, I like to think radical or trend could be as well some of the words so i already said four i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all right that's all right second one which everyday problem that you are facing would you like to solve with an innovative technology well for me one area it's education uh, because i think during corona it was very visible i have four kids uh, the way that uh, technology can impact the future of uh, education is really um, impactful and I believe there is a lot that still can be done um, in terms of innovation in this area. What have you recently posted on social media? Well, uh, <laughs> so this week I posted about uh, um, a movie called Social Dilemma. Dilemma uh, on Netflix, uh, right? Yes, exactly on Netflix and how Uh, social media is impacting um, different generations and the polarization of opinions. And as well, for me, it's important to understand uh, a bit how the business model impacts society and how these social media uh, channels are some, somehow uh, manipulating uh, our minds. So it was a very interesting one and I would recommend everyone to watch it. What would you prefer, one task at a time or multitasking? Multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> Supporting startups or founding your own company? Oh, both. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so difficult to say it, but well, I think what I do is both. It's multitasking, so <laughs> yeah. All right, and the last one. What would you prefer, digital networking or networking at physical events? Unfortunately, physical events. I think um, we we are doing quite well on online, but offline it's something that it's not replaceable. <laughs> All right. So I've known you for about two years right now, and I got to know you as a person who is doing a lot of things, especially here in the Rhine Main area, especially in Frankfurt. Um, you've been supporting so many startups, so many projects. You've been initiating so many new initiatives and projects here in Frankfurt. Um, but not only in Germany, on Frankfurt, but also in the past in, in Paris and Lisbon as well. And um, yeah, you've been involved in some founding processes, in some own startup projects that you've, that you've been working on in the past and got in contact, of course, with a lot of people from different backgrounds and, of course, also with different skill sets. Um, how can you keep track of all the projects that we're doing? Yeah, 
some kind of all of the, at the same time? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, um, it's about having an overall helicopter vision uh, of an ecosystem. So everything that I work within, uh, for me, it makes part of an ecosystem. <laughs> so for me, it's not that I just jump in uh, on, an, on an opportunity or on a platform just for the sake of doing it. It's really because I believe that by doing this, I'm creating some value and something that adds on, one, to me as a person, as a professional, two, to the other stakeholders that I work within, and three, overall, uh, to the society. So um, for me, yeah, sometimes it's hard to track even time or the tasks, uh, but I try to do it on a daily basis to try to see uh, the improvements that I'm doing in all my initiatives. Um, and sometimes it requires, yes, uh, to be in contact with my team members uh, or with my partners, uh, but it's something that I like it. I like to do it as a passion, and um, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure that you have some digital tools that you use to organize yourself, <laughs> because I think otherwise it wouldn't be possible to do all the projects at the same time. Yes. Could you recommend some of these tools? So, what are your favorites? How do you use them for, on the one hand, organizing yourself, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, also tracking some progress or also mm -hmm. some success? Well, I use on a daily basis several tools. So, for example, for quick communication, WhatsApp is a good tool, but just for quick communication. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to really project ongoing talks, we use a lot Trello and uh, not Trello, sorry, Slack for this communication. Trello then is a good add on and that we even merge with Slack, uh, but it's more for tasks where we can see as our ideas, our to do, what we are working on, who is the person who is doing it, and that we can move uh, the cards. Uh, so these are examples of tools that I use on a da daily basis. Obviously, we have a lot of Google Drives uh, with documents that uh, are shared between those teams. Um, calendars on Google Calendar. But yeah, I think uh, luckily, there are a lot of technologies that uh, uh, enables us to be, um, yeah, to keep a track of all the tasks and to get reminders and to follow up. Uh, Which makes it also a lot easier than earlier yes. in the time because I personally, I mean, I grew up during digitization and I couldn't imagine a world anymore where you organize yourself everything by just writing something down, you know? <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe or hard to imagine for me as a digital native um, so, uh, how it was um, before all the tools and all mm -hmm. the stuff came on during digitization. But I can imagine that you still know the times without <laughs> Trello, without Slack, without well, Google. Yes. How yes, did you I, organize yourself? I still remember those times uh, and I still use it from time to time, obviously. I like to creep, keep a track as well offline so that I have my own uh, canvas in front of me um, with some post-its that uh, reminds me. Sometimes it's really even better uh, because it, it's there, so you cannot avoid it. Um, and you look at it while offline and it gives you an extra uh, motivation because it's really in front of you visually um, that you see okay these post-its are here for a long time I need to remove it <laughs> um, so yeah I keep a track I think something that I also do which is kind of offline um, it's really to have a weekly um, kind of call with the teams that uh, enables us as a team to see what we have been doing, what we need to do. So the key actions for the next days. And by doing this, I don't know, on a Monday or on a Tuesday, or sometimes even on Thursday or Friday to, to, uh, to spare it in the different days, I think it gives us the, um, the, the structure way uh, to keep the projects moving forward. I understand. Okay. It takes time, yes, but it's very important to 
to be efficient and to keep all the projects going on. Absolutely. So regarding your network, I mean, you've been doing a lot of networking work here in Frankfurt. You're building a huge innovation community, but also for you as a person, you've built a huge network. So regarding your the number of LinkedIn connections you have, it's, it's just amazing. And um, I was wondering how you manage this network you built And one step before how you actually started to build something like a community or, how, or yeah, a network here in Frankfurt. So, I mean, you, you came to Frankfurt a couple of years ago and then there must have been a starting point where you said, okay, I want to build some communities here. I want to build a personal network as well. Um, maybe you can take us with you on this journey on how you started to build this network. Okay. Well, it's, well, it's a nice exercise. So I think it was... I came to Frankfurt nine years ago, but at that time I had a stable offer, a job offer. Um, I think I made it for some years, but at some point I felt something in me telling me, okay, you need to uh, find your way, bring more impact because what you are doing right now, maybe it's not as impactful as you want. So uh, I saw myself doing something that I was not passionate about and I said okay I'm here in Frankfurt let's disrupt <laughs> what is happening uh, I was looking at yeah what was happening in Frankfurt I felt like four years five years ago uh, there was not so much things happening not so much international visibility for example uh, every time I was traveling to those ecosystems you mentioned, like Madrid, uh, Lisbon, Paris, people were asking me, well, why did you settle in Frankfurt? Why do you prefer Frankfurt over Lisbon? Uh, nothing is happening. And that's when I said, okay, that's not true. And I'm going to show you that it, there is a lot happening. Um, so that's why I felt, okay, I took a look at the ecosystem. I tried to see what were the missing parts and I identified some I What tried to well there were parts that I spotted like mm, for example early stage accelerator programs uh, that were not there uh, initiatives related to students were not there or if there were were not so successful as Equipa or others <laughs> um, but as well Well, the part of the education, there were a lot that could still be done. Um, and the part of the internationalization, I really thought that there was a lot missing. So there was not a strategy that could highlight uh, for international stake stakeholders what was happening here um, and was well to try to promote the scale up mindset To the local startups um, so that's when I started to bring initiatives like uh, Frankfurt Valley, Singularity University, uh, Startup Digest, um, Founders Institute because in those areas I felt okay I can personally support and as well bring ongoing initiatives that will um, help foster Foster those areas that I felt were missing. So that means, um, summarized, you came to Frankfurt, you identified a city with a huge potential, mm -hmm. but with some challenges or problems of or lacks of opportunities mm -hmm. um, that that were not identified before, maybe. And then yes. you said, "Okay, I want to do something for it. I see the potential. I want to unfold yes. the potential." Yes. Some of these initiatives were quite visible mm -hmm. and being successfully. Uh, successful in the, the ecosystems that I had experienced like in Madrid, Lisbon or Paris so for me it was a natural step to look into our ecosystem and when I saw that no one was doing it that's when I felt okay someone needs to take care of it I can pitch this idea to more people and either they move it forward or not or I'll move it forward with some people of my network and that's what we did. But what was your core motivator? So uh, what, what, I, what I don't see yet is, I mean, you came to a city which was completely new to you. Mm -hmm. 
the city didn't give anything back to you before. So um, what I could imagine is that you, if you've been working in the city like for 10 years before you started building an innovation community here, that you may be so thankful for what the city gave you that you said, okay, you want to give the city something back and do some community working and, and, and organizing networking events and all the stuff. But what was your core motivated when you said, okay, okay I want to build an innovation community and innovation ecosystem here in Frankfurt because you were yeah, kind of new to the city, right? So I think my main motivation was that I detected the issue. Mm -hmm. I had the problem and, and you wanted to solve it. I wanted to solve it mm -hmm. just like an entrepreneur. <laughs> so and by doing the journey, I found out that the problem was not only mine. So if the problem was only mine, maybe I have not, I would given up and not push it. But while I was talking to people, I found out, okay, I'm not the only crazy person, uh, an expat that came to Frankfurt that feels like uh, things need to, to change. <laughs> so as I felt that there were more people uh, experiencing the same, I felt, okay, it makes sense to tackle this issue, to try to support um, the entrepreneurs that are facing diffic difficulties to uh, yeah, to set up their company here in Frankfurt. And on the other side, yeah, I felt that by taking an active role uh, in this ecosystem, uh, it would also create value to me as a person and for everyone that is working with me for my network, uh, not only the first degree, but the second degree. Uh, so, yeah, I see. Okay. So for building an innovation ecosystem, from my point of view, one of the core aspects that you need to bring is a great networking skill. Mm -hmm. And I think that you are the master of networking here in Frankfurt because everyone I'm talking to who is related to innovation knows you as a person. Mm -hmm. And I'm always surprised and impressed on how you're doing it because I personally think that networking, especially when you are on an event and don't know anyone, isn't the situation where everyone feels comfortable because if you, you need to go straight to people, you need to talk to them and that's not a situation. So you need, you need to go out of your comfort zone for those kind of situations. And um, since you are obviously a great networker, maybe you can share some insights with us on which core skills or qualities a person needs to bring when yeah, you want to be a good networker. I think um, you gave a good example and I can explain you how I yeah, tackle this kind of situation. So for me, I think the networking doesn't start in the day of the event. For me, it starts with a preparation. It's like a relationship. So if you want to build a network, you need to invest time on it. You need to understand the different stakeholders, the people that you are talking to, to understand what is their core um, missions, visions, projects, so that you can understand, okay, what should I talk to this person about? Is there something that I can support this person? So always trying to find links. Um, and maybe, yeah, for me, it's about preparing, doing the market analysis or whatever, finding the link. Um, and then, yeah, maybe sometimes during the events is not the right time to have the deeper conversations, uh, but then try to promote um, post the event uh, to really brainstorm about the, um, yeah, the possibilities. Uh, and I think as a relationship, um, you always need to give something and don't expect immediately a payback. Uh, that's how I see it. So I build a lot of relationships because I believe that uh, if I have something that I can create value to the other person, I'm very happy to do it. Uh, I don't expect the person to pay me back, uh, but I know that by being generous, by um, yeah, by building this, that sooner or later the person will also find a link and in the future uh, most probably this person will also create value to me or to someone else. So it doesn't need to be to me directly. I believe that as an ecosystem if I'm supporting someone and this person grows, um, 
all the entire ecosystem is growing. So um, it, it, it almost reminds me. So what you're telling me about networking right now almost reminds me of building a startup, actually, because the whole journey that you described started with something like a market analysis, yeah. right? Um, analyzing your your customer in a way yes. or someone you want to network with on an event or online yes. or wherever, then you need to bring a benefit to him, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like when you found a startup, you also need to bring a benefit to your customer. And then in the best case, you make him a brand ambassador or something like that. And then you get some value back from, from your customers. So it's, it's, it's interesting to hear that there are some... It's yeah. the perfect example. And maybe that's why I love networking because it's pretty much very similar. So, and I that's think... Great. Um, networking only makes sense when, for me, in business, when you create value. So if you are not creating value, then don't invest on relationships, on networking, because it's a waste of time for you, for the other person. Um, and yeah, I think one need really to curate uh, the type of networking that uh, that it's being done. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's go one step further. So let's imagine you got to know someone, you brought value to him. What is what is the next step for building a really good relationship? So mm -hmm. how do you keep contact? How do you keep giving value or receiving value? Mm -hmm. Do you have any best practices there? For me, I think a good way to keep feeding or keep feeding the, the networking and the relation is really to do follow ups. Mm -hmm. Because um, I'm not just interested in giving you, for example, a contact and then you do whatever you want to do with this person. Um, I really, as a person, I'm interested. So I will come back to you and ask, okay, Justin, do you remember this person then, uh, that I introduced you? How was the meeting? Uh, did you came up with a good solution for both of you? Uh, so trying to do the follow-up because then you or in this scenario, you will tell me, no, Peter, this person was wrong. Uh, I don't know. You give me feedback, uh, either positive or negative, and then I can adjust myself and say, okay, maybe I got your company wrong or his company wrong. Can you explain me once again? Why did it, did it work, for example? Um, so I think follow-up is key because, again, then you learn about the other person issue, challenge, whatever. Uh, and as well, if the person succeed, then the person will tell you it was great. And then positive feedback is also good and you can try to see it. So now what's next? How can I support you more? I or see. can I make it visible to other stakeholders that this improved you? Um, and that's something that I think uh, I try to do often it, it still can be pretty much compared to, to startups, right? So I, I always see the, this comparison because if you found your customer, you need to follow up him, uh -huh. right? And it, it's just like sales, actually. Yes. Yes. Um, and if you, if you keep on track, if you follow up, if you uh, keep the contact with him, um, you can build closer connections. Yes. So yeah, I, I can totally understand it. Um, regarding the innovation ecosystem here in Frankfurt, we did some research and we found out that still, even though you're doing a lot of networking mm -hmm. events here and a lot of um, building an, an, a sustainable innovation ecosystem in Frankfurt, the state of Hessen, where we live in and where Frankfurt is based in as well, is still not under the top three of startup cities or startup states in Germany. So still Berlin, Bavaria and especially Munich, mm -hmm. but also North Rhine-Westphalia are or have more startups than we in Hessen or in Frankfurt do. What would you say, what is the reason? Why are there so many startups which are founded in Berlin or in Munich, for example, and why not in Frankfurt? Mm -hmm. Well, I will open just a remark uh, because you can do the, the analysis in volume, but when you compare it to the amount of citizens in the city, then we have a better amount of founders per a thousand of people so in that regards maybe if we compare it uh in with a different way okay. maybe yeah. we are doing better but yeah it's quite general knowledge that those cities that are uh bigger in amount of inhabitants have more founders um but yeah this was just a parenthesis uh, uh, but when it comes to um, yeah, challenges that we still face in order to 
grow up in the in the ranking i think well we are in a different phase uh, so the ecosystems have different phases uh, when they are starting when they are getting more uh, mature and when they are already uh, scaling up and all of the examples that you gave most probably are already in a phase that they are already scaling up, grown up, while the Frankfurt ecosystem is still on an early stage. Uh, we are growing, yes, uh, but I think we are still lacking some elements on the ecosystem that will make it uh, grow even faster. For example, all the cities that you mentioned, I believe that they already raised unicorns, Frankfurt not. Uh, it's not a milestone, but it's important. And setting up role models and having um, leaders and examples gives you and gives the ecosystem more uh, awareness. awareness and more traction. Uh, and I think that's what is still lacking uh, because this will give as well yeah, more money, more VCs interested, and we are still missing this part. And it's a very that's important true. part that uh, takes time. So it's not going to be built from one day to another. Do you see any startup with the potential for becoming a unicorn here in Frankfurt? Uh, we have some. There is one that may be closer to that. And we have some others that have possibility to... Uh, to grow. Any specific examples? Well, I, I was working for one that it's growing <laughs> very fast. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing tech companies uh, in Europe. Uh, a great team, very diverse. Uh, and I think that they have everything that it needs to, to become one. Uh, fingers crossed for them. <laughs> and I think it would be a great success story for, for, the, for the whole region. Yes. Right. Yeah. So regarding this Frankfurt ecosystem, from, from my point of view, I'm always being asked, why are you located in Frankfurt? And with all the innovation leaders we been, we've been working together in the past, they're always asking me this question when we get to know them. And I'm always saying, I think Frankfurt brings great conditions for building a company because you can build great connections here. You're based in the center of Germany, which also helps when you, when you drive to um, to other cities or when, when you have some appointments in other cities, um, which is more efficient when you're based in the center of, of Germany. Um, but I think there are also some other points where there's a huge potential for Frankfurt rega uh, regarding, yeah, becoming an, a, a huge innovation ecosystem. Where do you see the, the highest potential? What, what are the circumstances that Frankfurt brings that are, yeah, that, that make the best conditions for people becoming founders in Frankfurt? Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned one, you said in the center of Germany, but it's in the center of Europe. So for companies that target the European market, it's a perfect location. Uh, because, for example, in the beginning, we were talking about Lisbon. That's, for example, uh, an issue with the Lisbon ecosystem, that it's in terms of location um, in the extreme of Europe. And sometimes it can be... Yeah, a disadvantage. For Frankfurt, it's an extreme good uh, advantage to be in the center of Europe, to have so many uh, links to other great ecosystems like Paris, London, uh, Berlin. So I think it's a super advantage. Um, there are other advantages like the pool of talent. Uh, we have so many great universities in our region. Exactly. Uh, and this should fool uh, the startups. Uh, because it's talent, it's human resources that can be used, uh, a very international mindset that could be explored. It's not yet in the full potential and it should be. Um, and as well, I was going to highlight a third thing, which is the B2B. So I think we have a lot of great big companies in several industries from the automotive automo to pharmaceutical banking industry we have so many big corporates here uh, that those are also key points of the the startup ecosystem and that can bring a lot of great success cases especially for the b2b case absolutely yeah um, you mentioned something really interesting um, the location in the center of Europe but still 
if you build an ecosystem, coming back to our core topic for today, it's really important to focus on local issues and local conditions. How does it fit together? The localism on the one part, but the international um, reputation on the other hand. How, how does it fit together from your point of view? Well, in my view, and that's something that I always try to highlight to the founders that I'm working within, although they are working for maybe a local issue, a local problem, I think they, the, the solution needs to be scalable and from day one. Founders need to know that what they are developing is to start maybe to test here in the region, then grow nationally, but from day one to, to think about scalability of other markets and to build solutions that can be then replicated um, in multiple countries and as soon as you have the traction the financials to build an international team and that's the perfect example of the company that I was mentioning before because yeah I remember when they were just a small company and now they become yeah almost reaching 500 employees which is really by having uh, a product that is scalable, a culture that is scalable. And that's what I advise as well, every founder that okay. I work with. I understand. Yeah, that, that, that's, great to, uh, that's great to hear. Um, regarding the, the ecosystem here in Frankfurt, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's one more thing which I'm really interested in because every ecosystem, no matter if it's an innovation ecosystem or a biological ecosystem as well, has a starting point mm -hmm. and then it evolves and then it, it goes through different phases. How do you develop or evolve an ecosystem so from the starting point how do you drive it how do you let it grow what are things that you do for making it bigger making it more yeah known and renowned in in a city like frankfurt what are your key steps in building this innovation ecosystem here in frankfurt mm -hmm. well uh, it's a good question um i would like to again to to open just a remark I think as an ecosystem, there is one part that is very important and that we still need to work on, which is the cultural or education part uh, when it comes to, for example, families and parents, because uh, I believe that it's a key element um, to sustain and to grow faster the mindset because people uh, sometimes yeah, uh, are driven by the example of the parents and uh, I do believe that more and more uh, the families need to be open about entrepreneurship and don't see it as a bad thing, a big risk. No, it's not. It, uh, and people should, uh, not only in Germany in general, and that's a good thing about, for example, US, uh, that they, from the beginning, it's a cultural thing that they accept very well. Um, in Germany, in Europe, it's still not there yet. Uh, and I think it's key to solve that um, society needs to look at entrepreneurship in a different way from the basis, from the family. Um, but yeah, in Frankfurt, in Germany, I think the state obviously has a great uh, role and a very important part on being the active moderator of the development. And uh, there are many things that, uh, many initiatives that are supporting this. Um, and I think, uh, as you mentioned, biologically or naturally, there are different things that makes the, the ecosystem involved. I'm, I really believe that the ecosystem needs a moderator yes this but, would have been my next question actually but, <laughs> all the parts need to grow together for the ecosystem to be balanced so the moderator cannot be stuck in a up or in a silo it needs to be really communicative and there all of the different stakeholders need to grow together because if not you are getting issues in the ecosystem so for example, one of the issues that I already pointed out is that, yes, we do have 
good source of talent. It's a really benefit. Um, the state and has been investing a lot on this, um, but maybe to grow faster, there is a part that we have been missing quite for a, a while and some ecosystems that are well developed already have done it, which is really having more VC funds, more funds developed really to support um, new projects, new ideas. Uh, and I think by having those, um, we are still missing some of this. Uh, but once we have it, maybe we can grow faster. I see. Okay. So one more comparison between building a startup and building an ecosystem. <laughs> um, a lot of founders, when they found their own company, and I would also include myself in, in this um, hypothesis, have a specific goal they are working towards. So it can be making an exit and becoming rich. It can be self-fulfillment or, in my case, uh, making a huge impact on a lot of people in a positive way. When you develop an innovation ecosystem, do you also have a specific goal that you, you, you are working towards? Or is it just like that you, as you mentioned before, see a problem and want to solve it? Mm -hmm. Well, initially, it started by this, seeing a problem and wanting to solve it. In great lines, uh, there is a mission, obviously. So the mission uh, and the goal is to support uh, founders and ecosystems to grow. Uh, the way we measure it, uh, I think it's different from stakeholder to stakeholder. Uh, in my case, personally, it, re it is the amount of founders that I support uh, to, to set up their business, amount of meaningful contacts that I connect, <laughs> um, yeah, amount of successful stories, uh, but it's not that I'm keeping a track and measuring these KPIs. So you don't uh, have any KPIs that you're measuring regarding? As a person, as initiatives, we have it obviously. So for example, as Founders Institute, just to give an example, Founders Institute, we run an early stage a program to support founders to go from zero to one or from an idea to a startup. And obviously there we set up our own KPIs. Um, for example, last year we started with the KPI in goal that was to launch the program. The KPI was um, achieved, uh, but as well we had uh, internally the, the KPI to have at least five companies um, setting up their business in Frankfurt. Uh, so we started with 28 founders, we end up with eight. So I think it was a good result. This year again, we did it again. We started with 24, we have 14 right now. So I think, yes, we measure depending on the initiative uh, with the KPIs that we define. Uh, but I think the KPIs are always Uh, pretty much similar. So either companies that set up business here, uh, founders that um, got some investment deals, um, amount of people that were employed in those companies. Um, yeah. So you don't have this specific goal that you're working towards, but um, in fact, a lot of things, a lot of uh, topics that you keep working on and which, which keeps you motivated as well to, to stay on focus and stay online and um, keep on building and growing this ecosystem in Frankfurt. That's great to hear. Um, I, I hope you continue building this ecosystem because from my personal point of view, I think you as a moderator are really important for this whole ecosystem because you mentioned it before, every ecosystem needs something who moderates it and keeps it on track and keeps on or continues growing an ecosystem. And I think you might be one of the key players in future as well um, to, to grow this great innovation ecosystem here in Frankfurt. Thank you. Um, coming to our next point, Pedro, we already mentioned before on social media that you will be our next guest at Peak. And we asked our community if they have any questions to um, the master of networking and the innovation community builder here in Frankfurt. And um, in fact, they had a lot of questions and we selected some. And yeah, I will just ask you um, some of these questions and maybe you will have some okay. answers for our community. First one is, I'm new to Frankfurt and, and I would like to involve myself into this innovation ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Where can I start? 
Well, there are different entry points depending on what's the uh, industry that we are talking about. Um, a good entrance point, well, I just ended one to you. Uh, so some months ago, I took part of an initiative called Startup Guide, which is like a book which pretty much summarizes every stakeholder of the ecosystem from spaces, startups, investors, programs, and one can just read it and try to understand, well, uh, these are the different players, uh, maybe these are the key people that I need to contact uh, and then identify the links. Uh, so I would suggest the person who asked this question to maybe review Startup Guide Frankfurt because it's part of the market analysis to find out where to do the networking. And a good it's starting a good point there. Yes, it's a good starting point. All right. Um, the next one. What changes or shifts to a startup ecosystem should be done if it's plateauing, if it's reaching its peak? Well, if it's reaching the, the good peak, I would say that then they are doing a good job. Um, there is no need of a real change, but by bringing innovation, new projects, uh, you guarantee that you are keeping the level. So let's say, um, well, it's a good question. Do you, do you think we can reach this peak here in Frankfurt? I think there is a still long way to go. Yeah. Um, I hope, yes. I think we are doing a good job, uh, but I think it still needs some time to, <laughs> to achieve it. All right. The next one, do you see a certain competition between different ecosystems, for example, between Frankfurt and Berlin or other systems? Well, unfortunately, I should say that yes, but it's normal. I think uh, uh, there are some competition because people are leaving some ecosystem to go to the other. Um, but I think it's natural and normal. Uh, there are also some good synergies. Uh, as an ecosystem builder, I believe more than in competition in synergies and people find their unique selling propositions for each ecosystem and they try to, to explore it. I think every ecosystem has something to offer. Um, so, yeah, I don't see any issue between competitions. All right. What makes an innovation ecosystem stable and resilient? Mm -hmm. Well, stable. I would say that the only way to, to be stable is when all the stakeholders are communicating very well between them um, in order to avoid um, yeah, miscommunications or um, that people are not going all in the same direction. So I think communication is the key element for, for an ecosystem. All right. So for the end, I would like to do a uh, yeah, outlook in the future regarding okay. innovation ecosystems and innovation in general as well. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, I've brought six questions um, with me for today. <laughs> the first one, you have a lot of different roles. Um, for example, your LinkedIn profile describes yourself as a startup enthusiast, community builder, <laughs> networker, event organizer, marketing consultant, innovation manager. Which of those roles is your next project based on? Well, my main project is as a founder so yes uh, i think all the things that i do i do it by passion most of them are not even bringing any revenues uh, it's passion driven um, but as a founder i want to dedicate more time to to the project experience plus um, and all the other platforms that i've built i think i will keep working with my teams maybe delegating more uh, maybe enlarging the team um, but I want to focus more of my time uh, as a founder. All right. Regarding networking skills, what was the, was the best tip you were ever given? Well, maybe the one I gave because, uh, yeah, I think preparing, preparation is the most important part because if you don't have an overview of the person you are talking about, yeah, the chances that the, 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 there is no link is very high. So, Absolutely. but there is, I believe there is always a link. You just need to understand what's the link. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your favorite online platform for networking? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs>
I already expected this answer. Um, what is your goal for the year 2021? Your personal goal? My personal goal for 2021? Well, I would like to manage my time maybe more efficiently to have more time for me. And I'm trying to, starting to try to apply it now for the last quarter of 2020 so that in 2021 I already apply it. Um, I think during Corona, time was completely different for everyone, uh, for me as well. Uh, so I found myself working in s very strange hours. And now when I came back to the normal new reality, whatever, um, I saw that, yeah, my efficiency with time was totally different. And then I understood, okay, maybe the way I manage my time could be reorganized to find more time for myself and my family, uh, but not disregard my working life. So, yeah, I think it's a good goal for me and for everyone for 2001 and 2021 to try to reframe the, the balance. All right. Which technology, from your point of view, will have the biggest impact on the world in the upcoming years? <laughs> well, I'm working on a technology and I don't want to to do some advertisement, but I, I really think right. that brain-computer interfaces can be very disruptive in the future. And uh, I really like to work on that um, yeah, business uh, area because I believe that today we are too dependent on devices. Uh, we have computers, tablets, um, mobile phones, and technology is everywhere, Internet of Things. Um, but I believe that if we could centralize everything in one device, and if this device is connected to your brain, then, yeah, you are free of all of the other devices. But it comes with a lot of challenges, obviously. Uh, legal, ethical... Uh, frameworks yeah. that still needs to 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 be worked and as well yeah the consumers because <laughs> consumers need to uh, be okay with this and it's not something that it's going to change from one day to another some ethical challenges yes needs to be solved before we can link some <laughs> computers brains. to our brain yes <laughs> the last question Peter what is your advice for the digital generation digital generation okay uh, young digital generation, um, well, I would advise them to keep innovative, creative, to be entrepreneurs, to change the status quo, to try to find problems and to solve them. And specifically, as I said before, if they are scalable, even more. So really to focus on, yeah, being radical, not following the rules, but break them in a positive way, not in a negative way, to try to impact, to bring in, impact to the societies. I think we need it. We need more people with this mission um, because if we keep the standards, well, we will have big issues soon. So we need people that are driven by passions, that want to change things positively uh, and we need more people to do it <laughs> that's great enough advice. problems to solve yeah ab absolutely no no question um that's that's a great uh, point to end here i think and that's that was a great advice for the end um thanks for being our guest i think we learned a lot of great insights regarding how to build an ecosystem how to become part of an ecosystem how to improve your networking skills as well um, and i think these insights um, can be pretty helpful for our community so thanks for being part Thank you once again. <laughs> Do you want to know more about the talk or the topic? On equipa.de slash peak, you can find every information about our episodes, guests and topics. We will also keep you updated on our social media profiles. The link you can find in the description box. See you next time at Peak, the innovation talk by Equipa. Peak.